on up. And um, if you notice in your bulletin, it says communion, but we're not having communion today. Just so, just so Pastor Kelly knows that and doesn't doesn't start. <laughs> I can picture you going right into communion. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, I want to open the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 11. from the verse 11 to 19 and 25 to 30. You can read here in the display too. Ready? Let's go together. Truly I tell you, among those born of woman, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is less in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept him, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ear, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her needs. At the same time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom Son choose to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus, in his three long years of ministry in this world, repeatedly takes his time to teach about the virtues of those who want to please God and access a new relationship with him. It is interesting that in the list of his demands, one appears that is very significant, and it is that God sped from his followers the quality of authenticity and sincerity, and no perfection has some mistakenly things. Contrary to authenticity, and sincerity, like false, falsehood and hypocrisy, two dissonant and exclude elements for everyone who wants to walk through this life with God. Let me share with you in, on this beautiful morning 
four spiritual principles that I find in this very profound word of Jesus. The best title for the sermon in this morning, you can see in the display, is Life Authentically. Life Authentically. Live. 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 Thank you. Live. Live Authentically. In the first time, live authentically to know God's purpose in an honest and sincere relationship. Live authentically to know God's purpose in an honest and sincere relationship. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, the Bible said, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. When one analyzes the earthly ministry of Jesus, one can notice that very few things made him react like the hypocrisy, falsehood, and lies of those who want to appear one way but did exactly the opposite. Why is it so important to God that we work authentically? Authenticity has to do with the real essence of something or someone. Something authentic confirms its equality with its interior on its exterior. That is the same an, an adulterated essence. Jesus repeatedly said some phrases that thought this reality. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus said, a good man brings good things out of the good stirred up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil star up in his heart. For the mouth speaks, the heart is full of. In Matthew chapter seven, from 17 to 19, Jesus said, a good man bring good things out of the worst story in your heart. Uh, sorry, sorry, in Matthew, this is, uh, in Matthew 7, verse 15, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are furious wolves. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 27, woe to you teacher of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites, you are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. Over and over again, we can see our Lord Jesus Christ teaching and challenging everyone to meditate on the importance of a sincere, loyal, and authentic walk with God. God knows and understands our human and sinful reality, but he does not approve or minimize it. 
Rather, he expect each person to face it, resist it, and change it according to the work of his Holy Spirit in each of his children. One of the main tasks that the third person of the Trinity will carry out in each one of us is precisely that of sanctifying ourselves so as to be more like Jesus every day in everything, in the way we walk with God, treat our neighbor, love, forgive, serve. Throughout the Holy Spirit, we meet people like us, made of flesh and blood, who throw out their work with God, we are authentic in their work with God. In our close and sincere relationship with God, authenticity differs from perfection since no person can achieve it in this life. But as Christ Jesus grows in your life, you can please him a little more every day. It amazes me to see that God always called people who were willing to serve him, obey him and trust him. No people who were perfect. What's more, when one analyzes each of their lives, we see that God allows us to see their humanity, their mistakes, their successes, their failures, their achievements, and their defeats, so that we can reflect of, on them in knowing that it is not the ability of a person to achieve success, but rather the willingness of the heart to obey, listen, listen to, and live for God. Secondly, we are, called, we are called to live authentically, to experience the grace of God in all its fullness. To experience the grace of God in all its fullness. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not with, without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Once upon a time, there was a businessman who summoned all the members of, of his leadership team because it was time to look for an assistant who would soon be in charge of the company. All the people attended and the businessmen told them, I am going to give each of you a different seed to which you must add a glass of water each week. After six months, you must bring me the plant that has grown in a pot and the one that is most beautiful and most cared for will win the opportunity to be the future boss and manager of the company. And that what he did, that same hour, each employee received a seed from his boss 
in a paper envelope with his name. They each went to their homes and planted the seed in their res respective pots. They all did the same routine of waiting it once a week. To the surprise of many, after weeks and months passed, the seed had not germinated and result in a plant. Many of them, next to the glass of water, plant other seed to their, and to their surprise, beautiful plants began to flourish in their planters. With a week to go, everyone was sharing how beautiful and fragrant their plants were and couldn't wait for the day to present them for the big competition. But one of the employees, despite the fact that he planted his seed and wore it week by week, waited in vain for the plant to sprout, since nothing ever grew in his path. Meanwhile, all the other employers were talking and showing off the beautiful plants and flowers they had planted in their pots. When the six months were up, all the employees went to the company meeting room where the director would be waiting for them with a breakfast to celebrate the future manager of the company. One by one, they began to parade with beautiful and exotic plants. The director was called when he saw one of his employees who showed up at that moment with his empty pot, full of soil but without a plant in it. He could see on his face the frustration and discouragement at not being able to compete that day with his peers, who were silently lauding at his poor achievement. At that moment, the uproar was interrupted by the entrance of the president of the company who, after greeting, began to walk around each of the pots and observe the achievement. Finished with the inspection, he stopped in front of the pot without a plan and nominate it as the winner of the contest. All contenders for the company leadership position were stunned by the winning choice. And the president and director told them, exactly six months ago, I gave them an infertile seed. And they all tried to trick me into surprising me by planting other plants. This young man had the courage to present himself and show his pot empty, being loyal, sincere, realistic, and courageous. Qualities of the future president that this company needs. Just like the end of the story, one day God's great reach us and completely change our past, our present, and our future. It was by his grace that we were called to experience the joy of a stable and secure walk with God's assistance in our lives. We fully experience the grace of God when we realize that we deserve nothing because our rebellion 
and distance from God, and his purpose are part of our, of our human nature. But it is the love of God that one day knock on the doors of our hearts to bring that hope of forgiveness, of change, of transformation, of eternity. That like the Apostle Paul, each one of us can say that we are what we are, not because of our abilities, but because of God's perfect grace in our lives. And like the Apostle, this grace has not been in vain, but the beginning of the tremendous and new opportunities that God offers his own at, at every step. In this transformation of being a new creation through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, we can leave the old thing aside and receive the new that he has prepared. Thirdly, we are called to live authentically, to please the one who promised to walk by our side and always assist us. To please the one who promised to walk by our side and always assist us. The psalmist said in chapter 23, verse 4, even through I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no e e evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Precious word. What would become of us if God's assistance were not a reality in us? It is his constant assistance to us with love, provision, care, and discipline that drive us every day to move forward and develop a healthy and safe spiritual growth. The Psalm in 138 verse eight, the Bible said, the Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The Lord will vindicate me. Elijah wanted to die before fear and loneliness. David fell into depression and anguish. Job experienced pain so great that he wished he had never been born. Joseph suffered the abandonment, betrayal, and injustice of his closest. Moses went through extreme situation on several occasions in his life. Paul and many disciples suffered imprisonment, persecution, contempt, ridicule, and torture for preaching about Christ and the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus was sincere with us and told us that in this world we were going to go through afflictions. But he encouraged us, saying that he will be by our side, assisting us every day until the end. We can continue the list of people we meet in the Bible who show us 
that in the midst of their crisis, God never abandoned them. He walked by their side, that he contained them, that he freed them, and that he fulfilled his eternal purpose in each one of them. There we understand the profound word of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 when he said, and we know that in all things God's work for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Surely we are going through a difficult, complex, painful situation that occasionally makes us lose, lose sleep and the desire to continue. What else could be more necessary that than God's constant presence and assistance in our lives? In Matthew chapter 10, verse 29, the Bible said, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet no one of them will fall to the ground outside, outside your father's care. Maybe we need trust in God, wait in God, and working beside God. In four and last, we are called to live authentically, to share the good news of the gospel without alteration. We are called to live authentically, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ without alteration. In John chapter 15, verse 8, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. The Lord cares that we live authentic lives to show the world the virtues of the kingdom of God, which has the power to transform a life broken and mold by sin and make it an heir to the eternal kingdom, an instrument of blessing for the neighbor who walks to his side. The, will, the good works we do, Jesus says, demonstrate whether our spirituality is authentic and true or false, false and pretended. Hypocrisy is the worst enemy of everyone who wants to live in integrity with God with himself and with his neighbor. And there is the importance of constant renewal in the presence of God, so that all our mistakes are confronted with the opportunity that God's grace 
offers us at every step. Looking at the development of humanity in this difficult time, we realize that the only thing that can keep us standing is constant renewal in the presence of God. So, so that our walk with him is a delight every day despite adverse circumstances. Without a spiritual renewal, there is no freshness. And the bad thing about not having freshness is that we can fall into religiosity, legalism, and hypocrisy. Each one of us was called and reaged out with God's love, grace, and forgiveness to share these virtues with everyone who walks around us and needs a life fresh and genuine encounter with the Savior and Lord of humanity, Jesus Christ. Sometimes the reality of the society in which we live give us a distorted idea of success that is somewhat different from God. While the word materialism is that we focus on the here and now, God will is that we raise our gaze and walk toward the eternal and transcendent. While the word philosophy of looking at the personal and individual, the gospel of Jesus, which we are called to live by and share, teaches the importance of loving helping and supporting the neighbor who walk beside us. God help us every day to live authentic and realistic lives in which we can be sincere with God, with ourselves, with our neighbor. May this constant work of which the Apostle Paul spoke be a reality in each of our life. May Christ be formed in us every day, and may we shine with his light in the midst of such a dark and perverse world. That as the church of Jesus, as faithful instruments in his hands, we can walk every day in the strength of God's grace and not in our own strength. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for remembering that one day your grace reach us and change the destiny of our lives. Thank you for leaving your glory in heaven and coming to walk among us to teach us how to love, how to forgive, how to serve in an authentic, a sincere way. That every day in front of your word, we can hear your sweet voice teaching us and showing us the way to move forward every day. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen.